After a lengthy beta drought, Apple has finally returned with iOS 16.4 Beta 1 for registered developers and soon for public beta testers. And in this video, we're going to cover several new features and changes included in this first beta. But before we get to that, let's talk about what else was released because Apple did also release iPadOS 16.4 Beta 1, macOS 13.3 Beta 1, watchOS 9.4 Beta 1, tvOS 16.4 Beta 1, and HomePod OS 16.4 Beta 1. One. Now, as far as the size of this update, you could see here it came in at a pretty large 5.44 gigabytes on my 14 Pro Max. That size will be relatively large depending on the version you're coming from. I was coming from 16.3.1. And of course, when you go from a public to a beta, it's always going to be a pretty large size there. And if we head over to our settings and take a look at the build number, we can see that the new build number is 20E5212F. So we do have an F at the end of the build number, which does indicate we have quite a few betas to go before the final release. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 16.4 beta one? And the first thing is new emoji. So just as expected, we do have several new emoji here in iOS iOS 16.4. So you can see we finally have the pink heart up there. We've been waiting on that for so many years, along with a new light blue and a gray heart. We also have these. This is the new face right here. This first one that is the only new emoji with the face. But we do also have several different animals like a donkey, a jellyfish. You can see there a moose, bird, a goose a pick. We have all these different emojis and you can see all of them that are included in this update on the screen right now. So it's nice to see new emoji. We do only get that once a year. So it's always nice to see that. And that is a big reason a lot of people want to update to iOS you know, 16 in this example. Like a lot of people on iOS 15 right now, their friends are going to all have the new emoji. So they're going to want to update to be able to see those new emoji that their friends are sending them. So that's a pretty big update, even though it does seem kind of small. However, we also have a change that is far more significant than new emoji. So if you go into our settings and go to general and then software updates, you will see a new section here that says beta updates. And if you tap on that, you will see we have off iOS 16 developer beta and iOS 16 public beta. And at first glance, I thought this was a cool, you know, change. You were going to be able to choose if you wanted to have developer betas, public betas, or just not get beta updates, even though you have the profile installed. However, after looking at the release notes, this reveals something much deeper, because if you look at the release notes here, you can see that Apple says that beginning with iOS 16.4, members of the Apple developer program will see a new option to enable developer betas directly from the software update and settings basically meaning you don't need a profile to be installed to see this section in your settings if you are on the Apple developer program. And then it goes on to say that in future iOS releases, this setting is going to be the only way to enable developer betas and the profiles that we installed you know, all the time before this will no longer grant access to the developer beta. Yes, that means that you will have to have the $100 a year developer account to be able to install future iOS developer betas. Now this does only apply to developer betas, not public betas. Public betas, I'm pretty sure are going to be free forever. So this is just applying to developer betas. And again, the email that you used for the developer account needs to match up with the email you use for your Apple ID where you're logged in on your iPhone. That's the only way you're going to get access to this new panel right here. So that is a pretty massive change. And that is going to completely change the way that we install developer betas on on our devices. I think a lot of people are going to start paying that $100 a year. Of course, I'm sure there will be workarounds like installing the IPSW file, but I'm not sure if Apple's going to have additional checks to check for that. I don't know. We'll see. Apple just said in the future that's going to be a requirement. So maybe that's going to be iOS 17, maybe later on in iOS 17. I'm not sure, but this is a massive change to iOS. Now we also have some changes in the music application. So if we go into one of these sections here, like playlists, for example, you can see that these sections are smaller now. So we have a more compact section here. And then also you can see up in the top right, the sort 
button is now a button. So before it said sort, now we have a button. And when we tap on that, you could see the different options that we get. We also have new alerts for adding a song to play next. So if I go ahead here and go to play next, you will see that we finally don't have an animation that covers up the entire screen. So if I swipe over right here to play next, we have a small little icon there instead of the massive one that we had on iOS 16.3.1 and pretty much all other iOS versions. It's always been an eyesore. So now you can see it used to be that big old alert right there, but now it's just a simple little animation down here. Looks so much better. I also noticed that your profile up in the top right now sticks throughout every tab. So before on iOS 16.3 and 16.3.1, if you went to the browse tab or any of the other tabs, you will notice that your profile icon and the top right is not there. It's only there under listen now, but now in 16.4, you can see that profile button there, that little profile picture remains no matter what tab you go in. We also have some changes in the podcast application. So if you go into podcasts and go to library, and then you will see we have this channel section. And if you go to that, you will see a list of different channels. So for example, if I go to Wondery right here, it will show all of the podcasts under the Wondery brand. So it'll show all the different channels that are under that brand right there. And you could tap on that and you could see every other, you know, podcast from that specific specific channel or that specific brand in this instance. And you can see they have 161 shows. But if I went to Apple Insider, for example, they have three shows right here, you know, technology, technology, and tech news. So you can see the different channels from, or you can see the different shows from different brands and it's considered channels in the podcast application. So it's better to kind of organize everything and see, you know, additional shows from different brands or people. Also here under the recently updated section in library, you can see how many new episodes there are that have been, you know, unplayed. So you can see two new, two new, six new, one new. It shows how many episodes there are unplayed or that you haven't gotten to yet on that specific podcast. There's also improvements to the up next queue feature. So it says the up next queue features new episodes from followed shows to help listeners decide what to play next. And with this update, up next will also include episodes listeners have saved to the library and episodes that play from shows they do not follow. And then Apple also mentions that the up next and the browse sections are coming to CarPlay with 16.4. This update also finally adds support for web push notifications inside of Safari. So this is something we've had on desktop for a long time now where you can get a notification from a website that is now supported on iOS and iPad OS with 16.4 beta one inside of our settings. If we go down to focus and then go into one of our focus modes and then go down to the focus filters, we finally have a focus filter for always on display. So basically now every time I turn my focus mode on for my recording a video, I will not have my always on display turned on. I've been waiting on this since iOS 16 came out and now it is finally here in 16.4. There's also another change in settings related to our warranties. So if you go to settings general and then to about under coverage, you will see not only the current device, but also other paired devices. And you can see it shows the coverage expired, but it does show additional devices now instead of just your current device. We also have quite a few changes in the shortcuts application in terms of new actions. And the first one is set VPN. And this is one that I know a lot of you guys have been waiting on for a very long time. So you can now connect disconnect or change the on demand setting for a VPN configuration on this device. You can now have that implemented into your shortcuts. We also have this one for lock screen where it says just simply locks the screen of this device. You can now lock the screen with a shortcut. We have an action that now allows you to set silence, unknown callers, set stage manager, set true tone, set announce notifications. There's even a shutdown action here where it says it will shut down or restart your device. There's an action for intercom. If you have home pods. So it says announces a message passed as input using intercom. And I'm sure there are even more actions added as well. Those are just the ones I found so far here in 16.4. And then as far as the release notes and some of the known issues go, we do have quite a few known issues here in beta one, which is expected for a first beta, especially with an update that brings quite a few new changes. So we have a backup and restore known issue related to the watch migration. If we go down here, you can see quite a few other issues as well related 
related to the home application and matter accessories, iCloud Drive. You could see these all right here on the screen, but nothing on here really screams out at me as something that is significant in terms of a known issue. However, we do have some pretty niche features here added to the keyboard besides the new Unicode 15.0 emoji. We also have autocorrect for the Korean keyboard is enabled by default for testing and feedback. We have Ukrainian keyboard now supports predictive text. And we have these three keyboards add support for transliteration layouts and a new keyboard layout is available for these two languages right here. As far as the performance and battery life goes, performance, you can see my Geekbench scores right here. We scored a 2527 on the single core and a 6442 on the multi-core. Now this is using the new Geekbench 6, which just released this past week. So I'm not going to be able to compare it to previous versions because Geekbench 6 is a more accurate test and the Geekbench 5 results are not going to really be the same. So I will be testing and comparing from here on out using Geekbench 6, but you can see the scores there pretty respectable. And then as far as the battery life, of course I did just install this, so it's hard to say how battery life is so far. Although I would expect a slight hit to both performance and battery life, just given that we are on a first beta, then includes quite a few changes. Now, as far as what's next for Apple, next up is most likely going to be iOS 16.4 beta 2. Now, if history is any indication, we might not be seeing beta 2 until two weeks from now. So maybe the week of the 27th. Now, it could come next week, but you know, based on history, it might not be here for another additional week. So we'll have to wait and see on that. And we're probably not expecting to see iOS 16.4, the final release, until late March, potentially even early April. I do think a lot of this depends on if we get an Apple event in March, though, or if we're going to see it in April. I think a lot of that is kind of contingent on what Apple's plans are as far as new hardware goes. And then I know a lot of people ask me about 16.3.2, but honestly, I don't see that coming at all. I think we're going to go straight to 16.4 from 16.3.1, unless Apple finds something that really needs to be addressed right away. So there you have it. That is iOS 16.4 beta 1, which includes quite a few new features and changes. I'm pretty pleased with this for a first beta. So let me know what you guys think down there in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future iOS 16.4 beta coverage. And of course, the final release when that does eventually drop. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.